I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Seifer. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. For a free month's trial of Treehouse, head on over to teamtreehouse.com slash show. In this episode, we'll be talking about the web manifest specification, CSS triggers, responsive web design, and more. Let's check it out. First up, we have a great blog post by Bruce Lawson on the Web Manifest Specification. Now, what is the Web Manifest Specification? Well, I don't know. I feel like you're going to tell us, though. I'm not. I'm just going to leave it up to you. You can check out the link in the show notes, and we will move on. Ha ha, I'm just kidding. We're going to talk about it. The Web Manifest Specification is made for web applications similar to how native applications are currently installed on mobile devices. Now, uh, what we're going to have in the future is since devices these days are being able to access more sen sensors like GPS, the camera, and orientation sensors uh, through native web APIs instead of just apps, well, we need a way to tell clients that these things can be installed locally. And we're going to do that with the web manifest specification. So when you install an app to your home screen currently on tablets, you can actually give this a name using the web manifest specification. You can give it a name and a short name right here. They have an example photo application with the name of my totally awesome photo app and the short name of photos. And so the short name would go underneath the icon like on the home screen? Right. Got it. Or uh, possibly even in the task switcher. Ah. If you don't have uh, room to say my totally awesome photo app, which if you think about it is kind of a bad name for an application. Yeah, anyway. prob probably not good. So you can also specify different icons for low resolution, high resolution, similar to the thousands of different specifications we have for favicons today. And you can also specify display modes and orientation as well as where the application starts and the scope of the application. So let's say you navigate outside of the app, for example, to a different website. Well, you can say that's not in the scope and leave that to the task switcher. Now, there are more things to keep in mind. They'll be available right there in the article, which you can check out in the show notes. Also something to note, the web manifest specification is not totally a real thing yet. It's something that all the different browser developers are talking about right now since this is going to be an issue in the future. Anyway, you can find a link to that in the show notes, which you can get to at youtube.com slash gotreehouse, or search for us in iTunes. We are the Treehouse Show. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is this wonderful website called CSS Triggers from Paul Lewis. And this basically tells you which CSS properties are going to trigger a layout, paint, or composite. Now, we've covered this previously on past episodes of the Treehouse Show, layout, paint, and composite. Basically, layout is any time that the browser has to recalculate the geometry of the page. So if the width or the height of something, for example, changes, it's going to trigger a layout change. Now, repainting is basically just changing the look of something once the layout has been recalculated. So for example, maybe changing the color of something from red to green is going to trigger a repaint. Or Christmas. That's right. Compositing is when you put two different things together. So. Uh, things like box shadows, for example, are going to be composites. But here, you have all of the CSS properties listed out, and you have this handy chart here showing you which is going to trigger a layout, paint, or composite. So if I were to click on something such as box shadow, it will give you a little bit more detail over here, and it says changing box shadow does not trigger any geometry changes, which is good because, of course, layout is the most expensive. But since it's a visual property, it will cause a repaint, and painting is typically considered a super expensive operation, so you should be cautious. Anyway, really cool site. Definitely be sure to check this one out because it can help you a lot when you're trying to improve page performance. If you use too many of those, do you think you would say that your CSS trigger happy? You could say that. It's not a good thing. Next up, we have a project called Fireshell. 
Fireshell is similar to Grunt or Yoman for generating client-side and or server-side applications, uh, but it takes a little bit of an opinionated take on that whole idea. So just like Yoman, you can generate a new app with Fireshell. It includes HTML5 boilerplate, boilerplate SAS with an object-oriented CSS setup, and it includes Grunt for compiling your SAS, SCSSS, and concatenating JavaScript files, and also includes Live Reload. Now, if we check out the documentation right here, you can see all you really need to do is download FireShell, and then scaffold your application, and it even includes commands which you can run in Terminal uh, to just double click right inside of OS X, and that will start your server for you and install all of the different extensions. Now this comes with a pre-configured grunt file which gets everything concatenated and minified for you, and it also includes commands for generating the final application. Now, this is just another way of kind of scaffolding your applications client-side uh, with the addition of server-side. It doesn't include the server component, but it makes it very easy to hook up to. Uh, now, this is also great for beginners because instead of having to go out and install everything yourself, for example, with Yoman, it's kind of all included right there for you with good comments and instructions on getting it going. Anyway, you can find a link to that on in the show notes, which we've talked about how to get to before. Also, don't forget to check us out at teamtreehouse.com slash show. Very cool stuff. Well, next up is a blog post from the Filament Group about how we make RWD sites load fast as heck. Of course, RWD stands for Responsive Web Design, a technique for making websites look good at multiple screen resolutions. Uh, basically, they break this article up into a couple different parts, but the thing I'd like to focus on is right here. Page weight isn't the only measure uh, you should focus on perceived performance. And what that means is that pay when they say page weight, they're talking about the actual file size of all the elements on the page. So it doesn't mean like how much your laptop weighs when you go to a website. Exactly. It, it doesn't mean that, Jason. It's talking about how, how long the page takes to load based on file size. Instead, you should focus on perceived performance, or in other words, how the user actually perceives the page uh, loading. So your page is interactive long before all of the elements have loaded in. You could still be loading in images, for example, after the page is already interactive and the user can scroll around and click on things. And right here it says, how we load assets matters just as much as how many assets we're loading. So you should really think about the order in which you're loading assets. And not only that, you should also think about what's called shortening the critical path, which is sort of uh, related to that previous point. Basically, they're saying that you should think about the order in which you load assets and then also how you can maybe load some assets asynchronously. So maybe you load up the page and then maybe you, for example, pull in some of the content after the page is already loaded and after it's already interactive. Or maybe you pull in some less important aspects of the page such as maybe social sharing buttons or advertisements after the content has already loaded. Anyway, it's a very in-depth article. Definitely be sure to check this one out. It's very important to think about how fast your page loads because if your page doesn't load super quickly, people can oftentimes click away uh, from it without even really checking it out just because yeah. it takes too long. So don't focus on page weight, but focus on page space. Wait, W-A-I-T. Next up, we have a project called Way.js. Uh, this is a really cool JavaScript library which will persist form data even across reloads of a web page that is JavaScript library agnostic. So uh, check this out. It's lightweight, persistent, and framework agnostic, and you can bind DOM elements to an in-memory data store with practically no code. So if we take a look at the example here, if I write down my name here, and then my picture, and you can't see this right now, but I'm going to reload the page. And when I do that, you can see the form data over on the right-hand side 
has been persisted. Now, uh, this uses an in-memory data store, so also this will persist across reloads and stick around in your browser. Now, you might wonder what kind of code you need to get all this, and it is right here. You just add way data is form data, and you can even add this way persistent right here. And that is pretty much all you need to do. Now, if you want to, you can put in some defaults and uh, some different default data right there. And that's it. You are absolutely done at that point. Add the persistent attribute, and you can see it's all persisted right there. So you even have this button to clear the data, and then it will not persist when you reload the page. Uh, now, there is also documentation that you can take a look at. Very, very easy to get going. Uh, super easy to install. You just have that one dependency, include the script in your web page, and look at that, there is no step two. You are good to go. Why would you even put step two in the installation instructions? I don't know. I didn't write the library. It's just way simple. So, uh, yeah, that it is. It is way simple. That's, uh, that's wonderful, Nick. Um, so that's about all we have. <laughs> time for here on the Treehouse Show. Nothing, nothing much more to say about Way.js except that it's way cool. So for more information on anything we talked about, check out our show notes at youtube.com slash go treehouse. And don't forget to join us for a 30-day free trial at teamtreehouse.com slash show. Oh, Nick, who are you on Twitter? I'm at Nick RP. Who are you? I am at Jay Cypher. Of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about web design, web development, mobile, business, and so much more. Just like Jason said, be sure to check us out at teamtreehouse.com slash show. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next week.